Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I really apologize for uh, not being able to share as often as I would like to. As you can see, this is this is where I'm living at right now. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> this is my front porch. Uh, still haven't been able to get back into the apartment, and I don't believe I'm going to. I know I I shared with you my desire to want to take back that apartment, but I'm going to just have to accept the fact that, and I shared in another video, where the enemy has moved me out of where I'm at to try to come against this ministry. Now, anybody who's sharing with you the gospel of the kingdom of heaven regarding the gathering of the stones, all right? sons and daughters of God, and the gathering of the sheepfold, which I started to share with you on the last video, the two folds. Anyone sharing this at this hour is going to have a tax, okay, that enemy is going to come against them to do whatever they can, okay, he's going to do whatever he can to keep this from coming forth. It's just the, the pure waters, the true waters of the Word of God in the revelation of the body of Christ. And so, you're not going to hear this from a lot of people. I'm, I've tried to explain to you before. Few are they, okay, who find that way. Now, they're to be gathered in just as they were gathered in before under a shepherd. Shepherds. Alright? Sons and daughters of God. Anyway, I went over the last video and uh, tried to pull off some things that we could go over again and add it some things. I'm going to add to the list of the daughters of wisdom. Uh, we're going to add to that list. We have uh, logic and reason. We're going to add knowledge and understanding. There's a couple more daughters of wisdom. <coughs> now, if you're interested in the seven pillars, okay, wisdom has hewed out her seven pillars built your house in the building of her house. Now I believe this is connected to the five wise versus the five foolish. So you need to pay attention. And there are some things here that the Lord really has impressed upon me that you need to start to understand and know regarding the nakedness and the exposing of that nakedness which is taking place at this hour regarding the harlot church and the doctrines and traditions of men, the harlot church, the bondwoman, the cardinally minded. They're held captive to the natural realm through their cardinal thinking. They have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, have not entered into the new covenant through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is entering into the kingdom of heaven, which is the new covenant, all right, which natural Israel has yet to do. The remnant will. A remnant will. Okay, seven pillars of the house of wisdom, Proverbs 9 1. <clears throat> now, the great deception of falling away, as I've shared with you before, has already taken place. We are at the state of the apostate church, of which, okay, when the Holy Spirit comes upon the wheat in the redemption of their soul, which was a promise made to them, they've been sealed until the day. Of redemption the period of time that period of time has come and the Holy Spirit by the hand of God is about to move upon all these households of faith which brings them into the judgments of God because he says he judges first the household of faith I didn't look that scripture up when I begin to share with you I share in the Spirit of God and allow that to come forth the way it comes forth some things I will share with you that I will go back over later as I did in the last video and bring out more scriptures to cover areas that I did not give you scriptures prior to. <clears throat> the harlot does not want you to believe the truth. I shall lift up her skirt. Now this is where the Lord really brought me into a lot of different things. Through a, Listen folks, this is not a very difficult thing and for those of you, especially this hour of day, who are earnestly seeking the truth, Okay, 
and I want to share with you apocalypse, what apocalypse means. It means an unveiling, a revealing, amen, Jesus, of what? The truth, the fullness, the full light. Uh, I also was going to share with you uh, scriptures uh, about the first three and a half years of Jesus' ministry being the lighting of the first three candles, okay, of that which was dimly lit. That was the dim light, okay? We only have half of the candles on the menorah of it, and he, he did that through f fulfilling a prophecy and the offering of his blood for the, the atonement of sin. Then the Holy Spirit came, amen, Jesus? And then the New Testament, his will began. Well, that was from the lighting of the first three candles, which then we read, okay, that they are looking into the revelation, the, re the, the apocalypse, the, the unveiling, okay, of the hidden spiritual truths, which many longed to, to see that day come. Now, the fullness of that day does not come until the end of which the last three candles are lit, and then it's a fully lit menorah, and we see the fullness of the revelation. That's what's getting ready to take place. As a result of that, okay, you're going to have the calling out from the harlot church of the wheat coming out from among her. When they've been awakened through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, spiritually awakened, okay, they see the truth of the nakedness, the exposed nakedness. I want to show this, share this with you. Nanum 3 5, Isaiah 47 2 and 3, Hosea 2 9 and 10, Habakkuk 2 15, Revelation 17 16, Revelation 3 17. Ezekiel 23:18, Deuteronomy 28:48, and Job 24:4 4 through 10. All has to do with the exposing of the nakedness and lifting up of the skirt. Okay, praise God. Uh, folks, this it's gotten so bad that sometimes, and I've shared with you before, I know I have read scriptures, and I know those scriptures, lines of scriptures are in the Word of God, but you'll go ahead and Google them, okay? And because of the cardinal understanding and a refusal to accept the fact that they've been deceived over these generations, okay, as part of the attack of the enemy and the trying and the testing, okay, so uh, that when I Google in some things that I know are there, they won't even come up. <laughs> and one of them is, and I hope that one of you might be able to find that during your read, <coughs> as Jesus himself said, I leave you as sheep for the slaughter. Now, many of you do not understand the spiritual wilderness journey that we've been in and how that could be seen as being left as sheep for the slaughter. But we're warned that the devil goes about as a roaring lion, okay, to kill, steal, and destroy, okay, who? The sheep. And this is the slaughter. There's also more regarding that, which I've been trying to share with you, about the bloody feet of Moses. I wanted to look that up too, and I didn't, but I may later on after I read, <laughs> go back over this video, and like I said, pull out some things that I offer that I did not give scripture to. Okay, uh... This is after the will of the testator. We shared that before. Bringing them out of the natural realm. You have to understand what's taking place from the old covenant to the new covenant. And why God said that he would bring them, he would uh, establish a new covenant with them, which is what I've shared with you before, is part of what they rejected. They didn't just reject the Messiah who brought the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven came with him. It's at hand. Okay, because all power and authority was given to the Son, all right, of the kingdom. <clears throat> Jesus even breathed upon the disciples, and they received the Holy Spirit. It was the Spirit of God, the Father, in him. That is very nature and character. That's why he said, have I been with you so long that you see not the Father? 
he was making reference to the nature and character of who he was in the power and authority of the Father. That by then, could they not see the Father? So, not that he himself was the Father, but the very nature and character. And we've shared this in other videos, and I've asked you to go back through these videos, all right, because there's a lot of fruit in the last two years I've shared with you regarding the temple and the type of that temple and the natural building type temple being relative to the body of Christ with the outer man, the inner man, and the Holy of Holies, that secret place that we enter into that we come before the throne of God. You need to start to put these things together and to see them because this is as much a part of the revelation, the revealing, the apocalypse, okay, that's coming forth at this hour, okay, which is the brightness of that light, okay, which was dimly lit then, but then comes into the fullness of that light. We're being brought into the fullness of that light and the pure waters of the Word of God, the voice of many waters, seeing and speaking the same thing, okay? This is how you'll be able to witness and testify to the truth of it being God moving upon them. <clears throat> Amen. Bringing them out of the natural realm. So that's what took place. In the natural realm, they were given a set of laws, all right, which make reference to a cultivating. Okay, when you cultivate something, you prune it, okay, you work on it. For those that have any experience with horticulture, you'll understand what I'm talking about. That's the process, okay, of cultivating what? He was cultivating the faith. Jacob was given the name Israel, all right, which represents and stands for the household of faith. Abraham was the father of the seed of that household. Faith, Israel. And from that root, Jesse, in the book of Matthew, you'll see the genealogy, came forth the seed of righteousness, Jesus Christ. It's that seed of righteousness that fell into the ground and died. And everything is as a type for you and I. So he says, I am the way, the truth, the light, and the life of what? God the Father. I am the way to the Father. I am the truth of the Father. The spoken word, the anointed word of God the Father. All right? Many people want to mix up the harlot church and the, and the cardinally minded. Don't want to see that consistently we are told that the flesh nature, okay, is not the physical natural tabernacle body. It's the nature, the fallen nature of the character of the individual. That's our flesh. Okay? For we war not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in the air. And air is another word that they want to deceive you about. They want you to keep you your minds in the natural realm and see air as the air around you, instead of looking up the word spirit, rock, air. <laughs> okay? Praise God. There's two. There's the natural air of which everybody sees Jesus coming in the clouds. I'm not saying that does not take place in the natural. It does, but that's at the end, okay, prior to man having to totally destroyed himself. So all the judgments and the wrath of God have already come out, and then Jesus appears to put an end to the destruction of man's destruction of himself. All right? That period of time, every man's eyes shall see and every mouth shall confess, every head shall bend, every knee shall bow, and claim that Jesus Christ is Lord. In the literal. Prior to that, he comes to gather the flock together as a thief in the night. And the reason he refers to night is because it comes during a period of darkness. We are entering, we are entering into that, if we not have already, it's not as dark as it's going to get, the gloomy, dark and gloomy day. But he says it comes, he, the light, that this revelation, the apocalypse, the unveiling, 
the light, the fullness, comes forth in a dark and gloomy day. Look these things up and Google them for yourself. A lot of times, you know, amen, Jesus, I've shared with you before that the scribes talk to you and the theologians, and I'm not talking about the scribes sent of by God nor of the teachers of God. I am speaking to them, okay, of them, who are still cardinally minded, have not entered into the kingdom, all right, as citizens, all right, and or have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but refuse to come under, okay, that anointed covering or covenant, okay, through the teachings of Jesus Christ. What their reasons are, uh, the Lord showed us, okay, that there were different types of uh, seed. Many of you spring up right away, and you need to watch out of that because there's a few of them out here on YouTube. They've sprung up right away. As soon as trial or testing comes upon them, they'll shrink away because they had no depth of root. Where is the depth of root in a spiritual understanding in the Revelation? Depth of root means you spent time digging down into the natural realm of the literal writings of the Word of God. That's the earth. This is the earth. From the dust of the earth have we been created. So you have to get a spiritual perception and understanding, discernment, of what the written Word of God in the literal is saying, okay, just like Jesus taught in parables, in literal teachings. He was sharing with us, okay, the spiritual truths beneath the surface of the literal writings or the literal teachings. This is where the pearls of wisdom have been buried. <laughs> this is how we come into the phone of the revelation. So he was bringing them out of the natural realm, the natural understanding, into the spiritual realm, the kingdom of heaven. Alright? And the new covenant. That's what he was there for, to bring them out. Okay? The lost sheep. Alright? Praise God. Now, first three candles were lit. I did not look that up again. I will do that. I will go back over that. So I'll give you scripture by which you can see the lighting of the first three candles, which was spoken of, all right, which happened in the spring festivals, which is why many of us believe that the beginning of the lighting of the last three candles, which I believe are also a three-year period, will begin this coming uh, Feast of Trumpets. Because along with it comes the trumpeting of coming out of Nineveh, which is a type, okay, of the worldly church. Praise God. The harlot, of which the skirts are being lifted up. The nakedness is being exposed. Wretched, naked, poor, spiritually. All right. And the last three candles will be lit. Then you have the fullness of the menorah lit, and I believe that's that hour that we have entered in, and the door has been shut. And no one will be able to enter in after that door is shut. Then have we entered into the banquet or wedding feast of the fervent love of the brother. Feast of love. In the fullness and the brightness of that day. Period of time. Messiah's week was cut short. That's part of the same thing I'm sharing with you. Son of man returns, spirit of prophecy, word of God, the shepherd. I shall return, okay? I shall also gather them in. I have another flock of which I must gather in. He's referring to the end time ministry of the man child and the voice of many waters gathering in the wheat into God's barn, the ark, the banquet hall, the wedding feast of which he shuts that door. Pearls of wooden hidden beneath the surface. We went over there. Old covenant, natural realm, law, new covenant, spiritual realm, kingdom of heaven. I apologize. Uh, it's been a real battle. Amen, Jesus. For the last two months. Those of you who have followed these videos know exactly what took place. And from a little fire became this great big mess that I have been, been being hindered. I've done the best I can to fight against that devil and uh, come, uh, the enemy coming against me and uh, this last week 
you know, that's why folks, you get wore out, okay? And you got know, to continue to keep yourself in the spirit and overcome these things and not think about them and just let go and let God and, and follow through, all right? And anybody says that they don't have any problem doing that, well, they're just not being tried and tested, okay? They're not having the enemy come against them, all right? Or they would understand what I was talking about. So, uh, that being what it is, we've only got a few more days, amen, Jesus, thank you, Father, that I will get my new apartment upstairs, the upper room, all right? And I ask you to forgive me if, if it's... Uh, if it's viewed as, as faithlessness on my part, my inability, or whatever, uh, amen. We'll just have to see how things work out for you guys. <laughs> amen. Although uh, the enemy may attack, it does not mean that we will not overcome it. Okay? He's going to attack, but we will overcome it. No weapon formed against us shall prevail. It didn't say the weapons would not be used, nor that the attacks would not take place. It simply says that even though it's been formed, it not, will not prevail. We will overcome it. And we will continue to persevere, okay, and overcome these things, regardless of what he throws at us. Amen? Amen. Well, the Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. And we'll go back over this video again, and I'll look up the scriptures or whatever it is that I left out and it's really important that you start to see where we're at at this hour if people are not sharing with you about the judgment coming upon the household of faith okay and the harlot church and the exposing of the nakedness and the apocalypse which is the revealed word of the father okay and the light of God coming forth in the darkness during this period of time which is coming upon the world okay then Whatever they're sharing with you is worthless. You folks need to be, amen, Jesus prepared for what the Father's will is. You need to understand where we're at in this so you can be prepared to see those things which are about to take place and witness to them. If other people have got you running off looking at so many different little things in the natural realm and who's doing this to that and all of that nonsense going on about all of that, okay, they're leading you away from where you're to have your attention, your focus upon, which is upon the mountain of God. That's what he wants us to look up to. Not the pie in the sky, literal air or sky, but the height of the mountain of God where which salvation comes forth from. Saviors. Read that. It didn't say Savior. It says Saviors plural sons and daughters of God so I mean amen you're really going to have to dig in you're going to have to have some root in understanding in the word of God alright what father's going to do is give them the eyes to see and the ears to hear that's the double portion some of you are going to receive the second portion which is the eyes to see some, who are the sons and daughters of God, are going to receive the anointing upon them, okay, in this end time, to gather the wheat together, so that the wheat, his sheep, hear his voice, which they can now hear, and see the revelation, so they can all witness to the truth of what's being said. Now, he's doing that in them and through them individually, so that when the sons and daughters come forth, in that voice of many waters, they'll hear it, know it's the truth, and come forth, gather themselves together in and under that anointing, which is the barn worldwide. So, if you don't know these things are getting ready to take place, and someone does not show you in the scriptures <coughs> how this can be true, okay, how are you going to be prepared? How are you going to know what to look for? So the Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Have a blessed day.